Seven minutes and counting. The orbiter access arm continues to be retracted. ATU strip chart recorders. And that is in work. Everything continues to go well and on schedule. PLT OTC perform APU pre-start. OTC PLT APU pre-start and work. Auxiliary power unit pre-start procedures are now being worked by pilot Scott Kelly. OTC PLT APU pre-start is complete. Three great talkbacks. Copy. Pilot Kelly reports that the pre-start of the APUs are complete. Activation will come in just about 30 seconds. We have a go for APU start. APU start. APU start, Tim Work. CDR, OTC, reconfigure heaters. CDR, heater reconfigure and work. T minus four minutes, 30 seconds, and counting. The SRB and external tank safe and arm devices are being armed. OTC, PLT, APU start is complete. Three good APUs, norm press. OTC, copy. This mission carries a crew of seven who will spend the next eight days in space performing three spacewalks to service the orbiting Hubble Space Telescope. T minus four minutes and counting. Let's just go for per sequence four. A final test of the flight control surfaces will be conducted. This is a program pattern of movements designed to verify the readiness for launch of the engines and other flight control surfaces. Three main engines are being gimbled as a final test before launch. T minus three minutes and counting. All is going well for launch tonight. Everything continues to look good for NASA's final shuttle mission of 1999. Tonight's launch is expected to be visible to most of the southeastern coastal regions of the U.S. PLT, OTC, clear caution and warning memory. Verify no unexpected errors. OTC, PLT, that's some work. Everything continues to look good, and we are cleared for launch tonight. No problems are being reported from the vehicle or from the crew. OTC, PLT, caution and warning. Memory is cleared. No unexpected errors. Copy. Discovery, close and lock your visors and initiate O2 flow. 
Have a safe journey to Hubble and continue man's quest to unveil the secrets of the universe. We'll see you in eight days. Discovery copies of Visor Pseudo 2. TLS is go for ET LH2 pressurization. T-minus, one minute, 30 seconds. All systems are go. Discovery is about 90 seconds away from launch. T-minus, one minute, 15 seconds. The liquid hydrogen tank inside the external tank is reported to be at the proper flight pressures at this time. T minus one minute and counting. Everything is still looking good for launch of Shuttle Discovery from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. T minus 50 seconds. And we are transferring to orbiter internal power at this time. Discovery is now running off its three onboard fuel cells. Coming up on a go for auto sequence start. And we have a go for auto sequence start. Discovery's onboard computers have primary control of all the vehicle's critical functions. 20 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. We have a go for main engine start. 4, 3, 2, 1. We have booster ignition and liftoff of the Space Shuttle Discovery on a mission to repair the Hubble Space Telescope as we venture into the 21st century. Discovery, roll program. Roger, roll, Discovery. Houston is now controlling. The roll maneuver is complete. Discovery is now in a heads-down position on course for a 28.5 degree, 310 nautical mile orbit. Discovery's three main engines now are beginning to throttle down to lessen the effects of the dense lower regions of the atmosphere on the orbiter. Discovery already traveling 700 miles per hour, hour, three miles altitude, a little more than a mile downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Now one minute into the flight, the three main engines now beginning to throttle back up. Houston, go at throttle up. Discovery copies, go at throttle up. Now one minute, 20 seconds into the flight. Discovery already 10 miles in altitude and downrange 7 miles from the launch site, traveling 1,500 miles per hour. All systems uh, looking good aboard Discovery. Three good electrical systems as uh, fuel cells and also the auxiliary power units providing hydraulic power to the vehicle. All three main engines still in excellent shape, approaching one minute, 40 seconds into the flight. The next step is uh, burnout and separation of the twin solid rocket boosters on the orbiter. Discovery system now weighs half of what it did at liftoff, having burned half its weight, total weight and propellant. Discovery Houston, two-engine Ben. Discovery copies, two-engine Ben Greer. The SRB separation has been confirmed. The crew has uh, also been told uh, that they can get to the Ben Greer uh, transatlantic abort site on two engines should one fail at this point. All systems uh, in excellent shape and all uh, very quiet here in mission control. Three good main engines, three good uh, hydraulic systems, and fuel cells aboard the orbiter. Discovery's altitude is 40 miles. Downrange now from the Kennedy Space Center, 55 miles. Discovery is now traveling 3,500 miles per hour.
Discovery Houston, press to ATO, select Banjul. Discovery copies, press to ATO, selecting Banjul. And that call to uh, Kurt Brown aboard Discovery and the rest of the orbiter's crew uh, that the orbiter can reach orbit on two engines should one fail. Again, all three are still in excellent shape. Discovery is 54 miles uh, in altitude now, downrange from the launch site 110 miles, traveling 4,400 miles per hour. Booster Systems Officer reports the three main engines are in excellent shape at this point. Approaching three minutes, 50 seconds into the flight. Discovery Houston, negative return. Discovery copies, negative return. And Discovery can no longer return to the Kennedy Space Center in the event of a problem on board, but all systems are in excellent shape. Discovery Houston, press to Miko. Discovery copies, press to Miko. Four minutes, 25 seconds into the flight, Discovery can now reach a safe orbit on two engines in the event that one should fail, but all three are still in excellent shape, as are the hydraulic systems and the electrical systems on board. Discovery is now traveling nearly 6,000 miles per hour, 200 miles away from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of 65 miles. Kurt Brown, uh, Commander of the mission, Scott Kelly, the pilot, along with Jean-Francois Clairvoy and John Grunsfeld up on the flight deck during this ride to orbit. Down on the mid-deck, uh, the remaining crew members, Mike Fole, Claude Nicolier, and Steve Smith, the payload commander of the mission. Now just more than five minutes into the flight, about three and a half minutes remaining in powered flight before uh, main engine cutoff. Again, all systems in excellent shape. Discovery's now traveling 7,000 miles per hour at an altitude of 67 miles, 270 miles downrange. Discovery Houston, single engine, OPS 3. Discovery copy, single engine, OPS 3. Discovery Houston, single engine, Van Jewel, 104. Discovery copy, single engine band, Jewel 104. Five minutes, 55 seconds into Discovery's flight. The orbiter can now reach uh, band, Jewel and the Gamby on one engine should two fail. But again, all three are still uh, in excellent shape, as are the APUs, the auxiliary power units, providing hydraulic power to Discovery systems, and the three fuel cells providing electrical power as well. Discovery is now traveling 9,000 miles per hour, downrange from the launch site, uh, approaching 400 miles at an altitude of 67 miles. Acknowledging that call, 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 meaning call, call, discovery can now reach orbit on one engine should two fail, but all three, again, uh, in excellent shape. Discovery's traveling uh, nearly 11,000 miles per hour, downrange from the launch site, 487 statute miles. Guidance officer reports main engine cutoff will occur 8 minutes, 20 seconds, 26 seconds into the flight. A discovery now at 7 minutes, 15 seconds into the mission to service the Hubble Space Telescope for the third time. Now traveling nearly 13,000 miles per hour, 600 miles away from the Kennedy Space Center, 65 miles above the Earth's surface. Discovery is now rolled to a heads-up position, and now uh, communications is through the tracking and data relay satellite system as the clock shows, approaching eight minutes into the flight, about 26 seconds now remaining in powered flight before Discovery reaches uh, safe orbit, downrange from the launch site 745 miles, 66 miles above the Earth's surface, traveling 16,000 miles per hour. 
10 seconds from main engine cutoff. Waiting for the call from uh, the booster officer here in mission control. And the main engine cutoff has been confirmed by the booster officer in mission control, standing by for separation of the external fuel tank. Discovery Houston, nominal MECO, ohms one, not required. Discovery copies, uh, nominal MECO, ohms one, not required. Uh, that call pretty straightforward to Kurt Brown aboard uh, Discovery, a nominal main engine cutoff. Uh, the next uh, event will be the uh, second or the orbital maneuvering system engine burn that uh, scheduled to occur about 40 uh, or so minutes into the flight. Flight Director Wayne Hale here pulling each flight control position to shut down the hydraulic systems aboard the orbiter as they are no longer required uh, now that Discovery is safely on orbit. Flight Director Wayne Hale uh, confirming with the Flight Dynamics uh, Officer here in the Mission Control Center that the Kennedy Space Center supports no longer required, uh, as is no longer required, the transatlantic abort sites. So the good news, obviously, discovery safely in orbit. And the next event, again, will be the orbital maneuvering system engine burn using both uh, engines on the tail of discovery to... Uh, more circularize the orbit. Discovery is currently in a highly elliptical orbit of about 317 by 30 nautical miles. That orbit will be significantly uh, raised on the low end uh, to about uh, 315 or so nautical miles to uh, place the orbiter in a uh, safe on orbit configuration.